Okay, so in today's setup guide, I'm going to be showing you how to set up RetroArch through Steam. So for Steam users out there, yes, there's actually a RetroArch app you can get. And in this setup guide, I'm going to be showing you how to install it and how to actually use RetroArch itself. So I'm going to be showing you many different video settings, how to save and load states, how to add games, how to access your directories in order to put BIOSes into place. So there's a lot of information in this one, as I'm most famous for, but this one is for absolute beginners, so check this one out. <laughs> Okay then, before I start today's Steam and RetroArch setup guide for Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. So every time I release a guide like this one you're watching today, you'll get notified and that also helps my channel out a great deal too. So the last time I covered installing RetroArch through Steam was going back in May 2023 and of course a lot's happened since with RetroArch and with Steam itself. So this is going to be a set up for complete beginners and what we're going to do first is actually download steam so over on the steam website and i'll leave the links in my description we're simply just going to go to install steam if you've already got steam installed then obviously make sure you're logged in and you can just skip this bit but i'm going to install steam and once you've downloaded steam we're going to get a .exe which is your main setup okay so we're just going to go through the process now of installing steam onto windows pc and then obviously just select your language just here, so English in my case. The next part of this is kind of important. It's gonna be asking you where you want to install Steam. So we can actually change the destination folder very easily just by going to browse just here, and you can actually choose where you want Steam to install on your computer. For me, I'm gonna just leave this to the default C drive program files folder, and it's gonna create a new folder called Steam. So if I go to install this, Okie doke, so we've now just installed Steam and if I go into my C drive and if I then just go down to my program files folder, we should have a Steam folder now and here it is. Cool, so what I need to do then is run Steam and this bit might take you a little lengthy time, it's just updating Steam to make sure we've got the latest version of it. Okay, so next part you're going to need to do is either sign in with your QR code or just manually type in your account name and password. Okay, so once you're signed in, you'll likely get a code sent to your email address. So I'm just going to do that now. And once you've entered your code in, we're then logging into Steam. Okay, so we're now inside of Steam and what we need to do is actually search for RetroArch. So I need to look for RetroArch now. Now, if you stay on the store tab, you're going to find search just here. If I just type in the search RetroArch, here it is. Now, once you've located RetroArch, as it says for me, it's already in my Steam library. For you watching this, if you've never done this before, it will say install now. So if I go to play now. So when it comes to installing this, we can actually set it to our install default. It's going to go into my C drive. If we go up to the manage just here, we can then select where we want it to install. So say you want it to go into your Steam folder in that program files folder that you just installed Steam to, you can set it to do that. What I'm going to do is just set it to install to default. So just C drive and install. And I'm also going to make sure that create desktop shortcut is and if you want to create start menu or shortcut keep this checked I'm going to just uncheck this one and go to and right at the bottom we'll see that it's now downloading and then it will go into installing and here we go RetroArch is now installing using Steam okay so it's now ready okay so let's now just close down steam just to minimize that and you're going to find on your desktop you've now got a RetroArch shortcut which we installed and asked it to do just a minute ago so first of all let's just open up RetroArch and see if this is going to work and here we go so it's now going into RetroArch using steam 
And this is Retrowatch. Now, before I go any further, if you don't like the way Retrowatch looks as it is, we can actually change this to make it look a lot nicer. If we go to the settings, and I'm using my D-pad on my Google Stadia controller, and let me just remind you there that Retrowatch is very good with automatically configuring your controllers. I've used Xbox controllers, PlayStation controllers, and I'm currently using a Google Stadia controller for this setup guide. So we're going to go to user interface and if I go to menu, I'm going to select XMB, which is quite a popular menu system for Retrowatch. If I come out, I'm then going to go to main menu and if I use my D-pad to go across and go to configuration file, I'm going to just make sure I save this current configuration because I've now changed to XMB theme. So I'm going to press A on this and if I come out by pressing B, and go to restart there we go we now got the xmb menu which to some looks a lot nicer so how do you add games into retrowatch using steam well first of all you're going to need some games so what i'm going to be using for this setup guide is a couple of nintendo nes games as well as a playstation game playstation games are going to need bios and that's what i've chosen to show you how to set up playstation so you know where BIOS files are going to be located and how to set them up. So let's just close out of Retrowatch. If I go down to Quit. So on my desktop now, I've got two Nintendo NES games. I've got Robocop and one of my personal favourites from the childhood days is Water Games. What I'm going to do is just put these two Nintendo NES games into a folder. So right click on your desktop, shortcut, folder. And I'm going to name this folder NES. If I put both of my NES games into this folder... What I'm going to do is also extract both of these because when we go back to Retroarch and we download what's known as cores, pretty much miniature emulators exclusively running through Retroarch, some cores might require your games to be unzipped. So just in case, I'm going to extract both of these by right clicking on them and extracting here. Cool, so we now got a copy of Robocop.nes as well as Robocop.zip and same for water games. So to import these into Retrowatch using Steam, we're just going to launch Retrowatch again. And here we go. So we need to import these now into Retrowatch so they're easier to access. So I'm going to just scroll over to manual scan and content directory and C drive because that's where my games are. And from C drive, I'm gonna just scroll down until I get to users. Now, if you wanna put your NES games, for example, your NES games into a folder elsewhere rather than your desktop, put them anywhere else. But just for this guide and simplicity, I'm gonna look for them on my desktop. So I'm gonna go down to Jamie, desktop, and here's my NES folder, which I've just created. Scan this directory, then press in the A to enter these options. And if I press up on my D-pad, that's going to bring us straight to the bottom, start scan. If I press A on this, scan complete. So if I now press B to come out, and once we're out, if I go right to the end, we're going to now find the Nintendo NES games here. So obviously, if you want to use .zip files with particular cores which require them, it's up to you if you want a copy of each game, one for .NES, for example, and one .zip. So next thing we need to do inside of Retroarch is download a core. Like I was just saying, a core is just think of it as a miniature emulator. So to run these games, if I just go to run them, it's not going to work. So we need to download a core. So what I'm going to do at this point is actually go into how Retroarch looked by default because most of you out there new to Retroarch might get a little bit confused. So to do this, I'm going to just go over to my settings icon, drivers, menu, and I'm going to set it back to Ozone. And again, just be sure everything you do in Retroarch, you save everything because it's got this thing about forgetting what you do. So save current configuration restart and here we go we're now back into ozone the default retro watch beam okay so to download and install a core it's very different from the general version of retro watch when we're downloading retro watch and using it through steam we're going to go down to manage cores 
And just here, everything with the hashtags next to it tells us that these cores or emulators have been installed when we installed this using Steam. So you're going to find many of these cores don't have hashtags and this is where we can actually download them. So for example, if I want to download Flycast install core, installing core Flycast. And if I come out, I can then check up if I've got a PlayStation core installed. So for PlayStation, I've got PCSX rearmed, so I'm going to install that one. Install core. And again, just remember to go to configuration file and save everything you're doing. And to run my NES games, I'm going to just press A. And here's my games just here. Now I'm going to play Robocop. If I press A on this, I got a selection of options to use just here, such as adding it to my favorites. So if I press A, add it to favorites, press B to come out. And if I go to favorites, we can now see Robocop. And back down to NES. Now, because RetroArch through Steam downloads its own cores, if I go to Set Core Association, which means that every time we open up and run a game through RetroArch, we don't have to keep selecting which core or emulator to use. So suggested cores, I'm going to use FCEU double M. Core set. So every time I launch my Robocop game from now on, it's not going to ask me which core I want to use. It's going to automatically use it. Okay, so whilst we're in gameplay using RetroArch, if I press the F1 key on my keyboard, we can access the main menu, the RetroArch quick menu that is. And from here, we can go down to save states and select state slot. And for this particular game, I have 1000 different slots to save games into. If I just leave this to auto for now, go to save state. <laughs> And F1s go back into quick menu, and if I go down to load state, and if I press F1 again and press B on my controller to come out, we can even go down to core options for NES, and you'll find that different cores in RetroWatch are going to have different options uh, for video for example but for this if we just go down to say video we can change the aspect ratio from here to say 4x3 or even pixel perfect and if we come back into the game and I'm pressing B quick menu A and A again <laughs> And if you're a big fan of Robocop like I am, this first level of Robocop with the NES, nothing to do with a film, but that's another story. We can also go to controls whilst we're in quick menu, and we can go down to port 1 controls, and you can actually remap your controller to your preferences. And whilst we're in quick menu, I'm going to talk to you about overlays. Let me show you how this is done. If we go to settings, user interface, on-screen display, if I just go down to on-screen overlay and press A to go into this, press A again to turn this on. And if I go to overlay preset, I can then change the boring black sides of the screen and put some a bit more nice looking. So if I go into borders and I select NES admin border, NES border CFG. And remember I'm pressing A in order to select these and then press B to come out. Main menu, quick menu, resume. And F1 to enter the quick menu again, and if we go to settings, user interface, on-screen display, on-screen overlay, if I go back to overlay preset, parent directory which takes us out, 
I can then mess around with different overlays. So you're not just limited to the NES and MIM border. For example, if I want to use TV Integer, if I come back out and go back into the game, resume. <laughs> Now you'll see that's very transparent. You can see bits of the game through the overlay. We can actually change what's called the opacity of this. So again, go to settings, user interface, on-screen display, on-screen overlay, and we got overlay opacity. If I crack this up to 1.00, and let's go back into the game. <laughs> And that's it, and that will apply for every overlay. So by adjusting the opacity, you'll either strengthen the overlays by making it look more vibrant, or if you go downwards on that scale, it will become more transparent. Other things we can do in Quick Menu is under Core Options, Video, we can go to a color palette and we can change how the color looks using these presets. For example, if I go down to FBX's Magnum, and come out, quick menu, resume. And by doing this, I can then make my NES games look as nice or as bad as I want. Now, once you've established how you like your NES games or any game to look, if we go to quick menu again, core options, manage core options, we can actually then save these video settings. So if I go to save game options, it will apply these video settings to this particular game only using that retro watch core that I'm using here, which is FCEU double M. If I want to save these video settings to every game that I'm going to be using, using this core, then I'll go to save content directory options. Core options file created successfully. Now, if I come out to exit my Robocop game, so restart. Now this time, if I load up my other game, which is the very awesome and highly recommended Ruler games, because I've just applied those video settings and saved them to run for every NES game I run through that core, I'm gonna find my TV overlay is still gonna be applied. Now, personally, for such a great game, I don't like this overlay. I don't think it's going to do it much justice. So, again, settings, user interface, on-screen display, on-screen overlay. And I'm going to just get rid of TV Integral. I'm not a big fan of this one. So, NES Animin Border and Select. And I want overlay opacity to display that overlay as strong as possible. So, 1.00. And if you notice, as I'm pressing my buttons on my controller, they're actually responding to the overlay on screen. If you don't like that, then go back into Quick Menu, Quick Menu, On Screen Overlay. And if I go down to show inputs on overlay, it's currently set to physical controller. If I turn this off and then come back out into my game, I'm now pressing my action buttons my A and B button, and it's not responding at all. And I also changed the aspect ratio earlier on, and I've still got those black sides, so I can match this up to make use of my overlays. So core options, video, aspect ratio, I'm going to put this to 4x3, which is the original aspect ratio for Nintendo NES games.
games. Yes, I spent many hours playing ruler games as a kid. I was totally hooked to this game, but I never did finish it. I think I got near the end of this game. If you played ruler games, comment below and let me know how you got on with it back in the day. So what we're going to do next then is actually take a look at setting up something a bit more advanced, such as PlayStation. And remember, I've also downloaded the core for this, which was PCSX Rearmed. So I'm going to just end off with the NES, go to the configuration file and save current configuration and then quit. OK, so we're looking at adding so a bit more advanced now, like I say. So this is going to be Sony PlayStation 1. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with BIOS files and which BIOS files to use inside of RetroArch, I would recommend using Libretro.com like I'm using right now. And this is going to tell me exactly which BIOS files I need for PlayStation 1 games inside of RetroArch. So here's the BIOS files that I need. And what I'm going to do is actually put these into a directory where RetroArch can actually read from. So to do this, we're going to need to look for where RetroArch has been installed. So we're going to go to C drive, program files, which is where Steam installed to. And here is Steam. We're going to go to Steam apps, common, RetroArch. And inside this RetroArch folder, you're going to find another folder there called system. And this is where your BIOS files need to be copied. So I've got my BIOS files ready to use. And I'm going to just drag and drop those into that RetroArch system folder. Now the next thing we need to do is take a look at games for PS1. So if I go into my games just here, I've got Raiden Project. These are in .bin and .q file extension. And the same for Rayman. Awesome. So just like Nintendo NES, I'm going to pop these into a folder. So right click, new folder, and call this folder PS1. So after I've created that PS1 folder, I'm going to just drag and drop my two games inside of there. And then we need to import them into RetroArch. So I'm going to go for the import and process again. So we're going to go down to import content, manual scan content directory, C drive, and if I press up on my D-pad, I'm going to go to users, my Jamie folder, desktop, and I'm going to find my PS1 folder just here, and this is where I've just put my games, as you can see. I'm going to scan this directory, press up on my D-pad, start scan, and now I've got PS1 up here just here. Now to open up these games, it's normally just a case of going for the .q file. Now, personally, I suggest checking out my video on converting these into CHD, and they work just fine. CHD format will take away all of these files that just looks really messy, and it will leave you with literally one file, and it also saves you space. But you can look for that setup guide in my videos. So if I open up my game, Rayman, I'm going to go down to set core association and earlier on I downloaded and installed a PlayStation core PCSX rearms if I select and I'm also going to add this one to my favorites and if I go at And for video settings, like I said during the NES part of the video, you'll find that different cores have different options, video options for example. So access menu, main menu by pressing F1. If I go to quick menu, core options, video. As you'll see just here for PlayStation, I have different settings. So I'm gonna change the video settings on my Rayman PS1 game by going to settings, video, scaling, I'm going to turn integral scale on to begin with. This is going to blur the pixelation away a tad. And if I go to aspect ratio, I'm going to put this one onto full. I'm going to put bilinear filtering on. 
Now, because I'm using the overlay still, and I've set aspect ratio to full, if I go back into the game, you'll notice that by putting this into full screen mode, the overlay is covering or hiding some of the video footage as we can see. So obviously to get rid of the overlay, if you want to use full screen, is just going down to on-screen overlay and I'm going to disable overlay, turn it off, quick menu, resume. And if we come back out and go back down to settings, video, scaling, if I turn integral scale off, we'll get more of a full screen image. If I turn integral scale over scale on, So full screen image now and there's a slight blur but we can actually make PS1 games look a lot nicer in this. And if I go down to core options, GPU plugin, I will have lots of enhancement settings just here such as enhance resolution. If I turn this one on and enhance resolution texture adjustment, turn this one on. And you'll see that by putting those enhancements on, the gameplay, the textures and everything else looks much more vibrant. And again, we still got the same save states in load states. So if I go to change state slot to say number one, save state. And load state. And more video settings we could do with PlayStation 1 is go back to settings, video, and if I press up on my D-pad, it's going to take us to video filter, and we can apply video filters including scan lines or even dot matrix effects to our games. If I just look for a scan line, scan line two times, and go back into the game. <laughs> There's an added scan line feature to that, although it's pretty hard to work out where it is because I've just applied bilinear filtering. So other filters we can use is by going to video, video filter, and let's try Super Eagle. And slight improvement there too. We can also use something called shaders, again, quick menu and shaders. And if I make sure this is on, I can then go to load preset and use shaders in say slang folder. And I've got lots of shaders here to use such as uh, CRT effects. If I put the top one on for example, And I wouldn't want to play that game whilst I was drunk, that's pretty head trippy. And if I go back down to shader slang, film, Technicolor slang is pretty cool, it almost gives it a cuphead look. Now I'm finally going to end this video with something called Retro Achievements. 
we go to settings, achievements, if you make sure this is turned on, you can sign up with retro achievements for free. And what this means is that whenever you're playing these retro games, you'll get little rewards or little windows pop up saying that you've reached a certain achievement. I'll leave the link in my description for that. But it's definitely worth checking out and it's also add into your retro gaming experience. And within the achievement settings, we can unlock sound. So every time you get an achievement, you'll get a little ping. And that's it for today's Steam and setting up Retro Arch Guide. So hopefully I've covered most things that a lot of you out there might be wondering. I've even gone as far as showing you how to apply shaders and overlays to make your games look that much better. So anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. And also, if you're a Commodore 64 fan, I've just launched a new channel, which is known as Commodore Rediscovered. So check that out. I'm releasing content for that one very soon. But for now, I've actually got a trailer on there. Anyways, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.